Now here is our man. This is Pablo Acuna. He is from Florida, Uruguay. Uh, not the United States, Florida. The Uruguay, Florida. But it's just as crazy. So, so the thing is that, um, yeah, this is going to be our avatar. This is going to be our champion for to see where we go off in the world. And I'll introduce you. I'll give you a little bit of backstory about who he is, what he believes in, you know, and what we can anticipate from him uh, throughout his career, you know, and for however long Pablo Cunha is uh, able to keep this going so let's uh let's jump into the game and i'll kind of peel through uh and give you the settings of which we're playing in and uh what you may notice is that i'm wearing something a little different i'm wearing my beloved uh wolves jersey as i am a wolverhampton fan so just letting you guys know that's where my allegiances are so uh, another Yep, okay, this mic is on. Uh, he does have another, um, you know, it's a, uh, was it a 5-2-3? Uh, so he does also have that in his locker for the two formations that he'll be running with, or I'll be running with. Um, that also being said, he is Uruguayan. Uh, he also has a dual nationality with Italian. Now, how this player came to be, uh, I loaded up all of the leagues. Um, I have a separate save file, and then I just went to, you know, staff search. You know, I randomly picked out of all of the club teams that are uh, like available in the first year, as well as um, all the international teams, and then randomly selected. I got this team, which is in Uruguay, which I'll get into in a little bit. But basically, um, and then I just you know went through a staff search, randomly selected people who were partially Uruguayan, so they could either be solely Uruguayan or partially. But you know, and then uh, that is how. Uh, we got selected with Pablo Cunha at uh, this club, Albion, as you can see at the top of your screen, right up here. Um, so, just a little piece here. So, the we are going to be running this as kind of like a little bit of a role-playing game uh, in the sense that you may know that there are coaching styles. Uh, I got some notes down here. Because some coaching styles that, uh, uh, that are there. There's disciplinarian. Uh, hold on here. Uh, motivator, youth development, knowledgeable tactician, and task master. Uh, Pablo here is a disciplinarian. That means that he gets to run all of the individual training sessions. So when you go to training and you go to individual here, these additional focuses, he is able to assign, like, well, I'm able to assign these at however I want um, to, you know, to any player. Um, if you're a motivator, you get to do the team talks, you know, like pre and post match halftime. So I'm not able to do that because I'm not a motivator, uh, for youth development, anybody who's 22 or younger, you're able to, um, recommend, you know, uh, recommend transfers, uh, or, you know, development loans or contracts, uh, for anybody who's 22 or younger. So you're able to at least mold, you know, that aspect of things. Um, if you're knowledgeable, you get to do that for anybody. You get to recommend transfers and and contracts. So you actually have more of a say about molding the team and uh, less about like the training of the team. Tactician, you get a third formation, and the taskmaster, you actually get to make board requests. You don't have to wait for them to offer you, you know, a choice or an opportunity based on how that goes. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the role-playing aspect. There are certain things that I can't do. So I can't lead team talks, right? I can't recommend contracts unless asked or also, um, you know, recommend transfers, uh, transfers or contracts. Uh, I can't use a third formation and I can't make board requests. That is it. The last piece of this challenge here is the fact that, uh, I, you know, we're based out of Uruguay for this save, and uh, we're starting with Albion. And I have to, I can only jump jobs if I'm offered a new job, right? Or if I get fired, it can be either one. Now, that being said, I can only move between Uruguay and Italy. And once I win, 
a title in either, I can move to other countries. I have a bunch of other countries that are mostly like neighboring or like significant countries, it's like the big five, any country neighboring uh, Italy, anybody neighboring uh, Uruguay, as well as like the, you know, like the big countries. I think like Peru, maybe might be like the one that's not loaded in South America, but yeah. So that's that. Um, you know, we're going to play that as like a little bit of an RPG. Uh, what we're going to be gunning for here is if you've never seen this it's the hall of fame uh this is what fm believes is like the best managers of all time uh Strogs ferguson number one pep guardiola carlo ancelotti jose Mourinho. i mean these are like big household names uh in the soccer community uh south america obviously you can get uh these these are people like man who've managed in the country of South America, like in what they l won while there. We got two Uruguayans, Luis Cubilla and Roberto Scarone. They have not, um, they've long retired now. So, uh, you know, they're not making any more gains. If Vanderlei Luxembourgo, 70 years old, unemployed. Yeah. He's won quite a bit, if I'm honest. Uh, 2003 2011 it's the last time he won something 2017 he got a state trophy he's got quite a few state trophies in brazil but uh he's almost only explicitly out of brazil interesting um oh we got a copa america in 1999 interesting anyways uh the nation if they've managed it they don't necessarily have to be uruguayan they have to manage in uruguay Top tier is six league titles, you know, just to even be mentioned or tied, you know, we have to have three league titles. Anybody who's Uruguayan as a nationality, not necessarily managing Uruguay. Again, we got the two guys who are in like the all time South American. Um, and then, you know, at the bottom here, Washington, Echemendi, uh, he's just got what? Three league titles, a Copa Libertadores and then Internet Intercontinental Cup, which is not even around anymore so uh these are the lists that we're trying to get on these are the lists that we're trying to get on so um again you know we could get on like the nationality of uruguay right you know anybody like specifically in the nation of uruguay and uh you know we could go i mean again we could not necessarily we could go through the italian side it's going to be much much more difficult uh as you could probably assume you know the, the allegri's won a lot trapatoni's won a lot capello won a lot so uh that becomes much harder uh you know in that sense even get, like getting on the europe side i mean that you're now dealing with the goats so it's it's uh it's a, just a different, it's a different ask when you get to the European side of things um, with the Champions League and the big five leagues and whatnot. So, yeah, so we can only manage in Uruguay and Italy. Um, you know, we can only move, we get offered or we get fired. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. And um, yeah, th that's what we're going to be gunning for. Now, let's go over the club right now, Albion, right? Right now, we got a takeover in progress, so I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, they do want me to finish in the automatic promotion spots, top two of the uh, the league. Uh, they don't really care about the cup. This one here, the Uruguayan Competencia final. The Competencia, if you've never managed in your, uh, Uruguay before, basically it's like a mini league where you play six games. The top teams qualify for the final, and the, the wins draws and losses that you obtain through this little mini league are directly translated into the regular season. So you will start gaining points in the regular season immediately with those games. So they're actually like the games kind of count for two different competitions. Um, so that's why they, they rate it quite highly as like meet the final. So uh, we will be monitoring uh, or I'll be monitoring how I do with these you know, objectives for each season. Also, too, I will be uh, monitoring the other coaches that are going on uh, and, and winning, you know, what's happening in Uruguay. Uh, so that's that. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were a little familiar with that. Other than that, I don't think there is 
Uh, anything else? So the first game, um, I just wanted to get you like a little... The first game would be against Rentistas in the Competencia. Uh, they are a pretty decent team. We are scheduled to be third in the league. Okay. Uh, by the way, this is a real-world transfer system, and I locked the first transfer window. And also part of the role-playing measure, uh, you know, there are the people who are assigned or like, you know, that have that job, they have to do that job. I can't, you know, get in the way of things. You know, the general manager is going to be negotiating the contracts and the, the transfers. The president's going to sign off on all of that. So you can see here that, you know, I'm not in control of everything. I can select the first team. I can make in-game, you know, um, in-game uh, edits or in-game, you know, adjustments. And when I'm taking teams on, I control all the trainings. Uh, I can have players learn new things. Like, but uh, yeah, I, that's my limited scope of things. So let's, uh, I'll take you through just like a little, a, a quick swish right through these guys so you'll get to know them more as the, the, uh, the year goes on. You can see part of the real world you know, there's a lot of guys who are going to leave at the end of the season. So Johnny De Silva is our starting keeper. Lucas Gonzalez is our backup. Um, you know, Johnny Silva is uh, in his prime years. I believe he's also our uh, vice captain. Um, I have Martin G Iglesias. He is a backup right back. We don't really have anybody in cover, like for coverage of that position. Facundo Vega is our starting player for uh, for that. You know what? It might be better is uh, if I just go with tactics here. It might give you just a better uh, overview. This is going to be the, the starting lineup for the first game. So we got uh, Martin Gonzalez, Platero, and Cappy. We also got a couple other pretty good, uh, you know, up and coming, uh, you know, young players. Alexis Piegas and Cappy are two young center backs who I'm I hopeful for that. For uh, Francisco Ibanez, I have a target for being, you know, he's got to be a better trainer. So I don't want to reward him with starting spots until he starts hitting that. So, um, that's there. Anyways, on the left side here, we got uh, Anthony Sosa. And uh, the backup for him is Axel Muller, who is uh, also German, as well as Uruguayan. Uh, we've got Gaston Sanchez and uh, Gaston Paiva. Uh, Paiva, he can play both of these roles here. but So mostly down the middle, he can operate out wide if need be. But he will be mostly an attacking threat through the middle of the park there. Uh, had a really good season. Uh, interestingly, he, I like I. It dawned on me that he could play in the middle there, and I could play him as a Segunda Volante, getting in those late runs. So that's what I'm hoping for him. Um, Sanchez is kind of a third choice right now. Uh, I do have a couple other guys that I can operate in that position. Jim Varela, uh, and then also Augustine Pons, who actually picked up an injury in preseason, so uh, he has not really trained that much so far. Uh, William Klingender, honestly. He's kind of like a backup. Like he's not really that good, but he he performed so well in preseason. Like every time he came on, it was very obvious that he impacted the game. So I inclined to just give him a chance because for whatever reason he seems to be catching like some hot form, and I'm been really impressed with him so far. Up top we got um, Maximiliano Cayorta. He's our big star player. He's you know what six one. A six one, strong, tall, can jump, you know, classic target forward. Christian Franco here, he has been absolutely on fire in the preseason. So I feel very obligated to just give him the starting spot for the first game because he's just been absolutely electric. Just run like just every time I put him on the field, he always scores a goal. Um and we had a great preseason, so I'm uh, you know, I'm hopeful. That going going forward, um, you know, just some of the other guys here. Juan Miguerza, uh, Muguerza, uh, he's probably going to be shown some game time here and there. He's not that great comparative to everybody else. Uh, Mauro Cacci, he is one of two Argent uh, Argentine players on the team. Everybody is Uruguayan. Uh, and the other guy who's Argentine is Alan Bonansea. Um, so he's a guy that's even bigger than Kyordo. So, you know, six, three, he's also an absolute monster. Uh, so I'm hoping that he could just get a little bit of time. I don't necessarily want him to take time off Kyordo, even though they're literally like one a and one B in terms of like, just like the style, they're basically the same player. Uh, Alan Bonense is just a little bit bigger, but Bonense is a star player. Like he's, he's earning the big bucks and 
Yeah. Uh, Martin Correa, he is basically a winger, honestly. Uh, so he's definitely going to see some game time. It, you know, he can he can be as like an operator as a striker, but I, he's not necessarily as good in that role. Uh, and then finally, last guy, he's was basically injured with a, a cruciate ligament at the start of the save uh, before my preseason game was kicked off. So I haven't ever used him. He's another classic starter. The schedule here basically took on four four teams that are, you know, below us. So they, you know, pretty much easy blowouts, you know, rotated the team heavily, just wanted to see who would, you know, vie for spots and, and look good. So um, that's it. I wanted to just kind of run this off. This is the intro episode. Uh, I'm Jack. This is Jack City. I'm going to just jump into the the next episode here and uh, we will show you the game against Rentistas uh, in the Competencia or Torneo Competencia. So uh, we'll see how this goes. And of course, these are league games. So they do matter and they will uh, have an impact at the end of the season as well. Not just my you know, managerial performance. So thank you. Um, and we'll be jumping into the next one.